My name is Four Vesta, the asteroid, one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt. Please enjoy. The asteroid belt is located roughly between Mars and Jupiter. I'm the second largest asteroid on the scene. I was discovered by German astronomer Hendrik Olbers, and that is for sure. In the month of March, in 1807, when looking. After the Roman goddess of home and hearth It was easy and flawless I was named by the famous mathematician called Frederick Gauss He was such a vision I am one of the largest objects you should know In the asteroid belt is where I glow The asteroid belt is located roughly between the orbits of Jupiter and this is the second largest known asteroid by both mass and by volume. That's knowledge to enjoy. I'm the second largest two dwarf planet series, the closest dwarf to the sun in your solar system. See, my mean diameter is 525 kilometers or 326 miles if the metric system's unfamiliar. I'm the brightest asteroid that is visible from Earth, but not quite a dwarf. I need some more girth At a distance of 220 million kilometers From the planet of Earth For what that is worth NASA's Dawn spacecraft entered orbit around me In the year of 2011, July the 16th Dawn stayed for a one year exploration And left my orbit when it reached its completion On the 5th of September in 2012 the smallest their names are spelled Ceres, Vesta, Pallas, and Hygieia that's enough about me yeah, I guess I will see ya my name is Thor Vesta the asteroid one of the largest asteroids in the asteroid belt please enjoy the asteroid belt is located roughly between Mars and Jupiter I'm the second largest asteroid on the scene Here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see Asteroid, meteoroid, and comets, and some wood stages between These different celestial bodies are important to learn We're all part of this universe, let's give these space rocks their turn I'm an asteroid, also called a minor planet to some A rocky, airless remnant left over from our solar system's formation You can find a lot of asteroids orbiting our sun between Mars and Jupiter within the asteroid belt I run I can range in size from about 329 miles down to 33 feet small I've been here for a while I'm made up of different kinds of rocks and some have clays and metals such as nickel and iron found in frying pans or kettles here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see asteroid meteoroid and comets and some would say between these different celestial bodies are important to learn we're all part of this universe let's give these space rocks their turn I'm a meteoroid I'm smaller than an asteroid you see my size can range from a grain of dust to a small asteroid yeah that is me I orbit the Sun I'm made of minerals called silicates which is silicone and oxygen I'm glad that you're learning this I'm also made of heavier metals Metals like nickel and iron Let's go explore a little more About what other names I can become If I enter Earth's atmosphere You'll see a bright tail of light If this happens and I vaporize I'm called a meteor, that's right Some call me a shooting or falling star I'm only called a meteor If I burn up completely, it's bizarre But if I make it through the atmosphere And reach the Earth's surface My name changes to meteor right that is important to learn this i'm a comet which is dust mixed with frozen gas when fully frozen
numbers and I'm about the size of a small town through space I do pass. I'm made of ices like water, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane mixed with cosmic dust from our solar system when it began. When I get close to the sun I heat up and spew dust and gas this forms a glowing tail that stretches away from the sun as I pass. A cloud forms around my nucleus from my vaporizing ice. This is called a coma. It can expand 50,000 miles and it looks nice. My tail that form can expand past 600,000 miles. Thank you for learning about all of us. I hope we made you smile. Here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see. Asteroid, meteoroid, and comets and some wood stages between. These different celestial bodies are important to learn. We're all part of this universe. Let's give these space rocks their turn. I am Bernardinelli, Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014 UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion. The first image of me was discovered in October of 2014. I was 29 AU or 4.3 billion kilometers from the sun. I was barely seen. That's about as far as Neptune's orbit. The furthest a comet has been discovered. That's where my presence was uncovered. Discovered by astronomers Pedro Bernardinelli and Gary Bernstein. With the Dark Energy Survey or DES, they had found me. In archival images from the DES at the CTI Observatory, which is located in the Coquimbo region in the country of Chile. I'm the largest or cloud comet, the biggest you humans ever saw. I'm estimated between 63 and 93 miles across unless I thaw. What is this or cloud anyway? Surrounding your sun It's a spherical layer of icy objects Outside the orbit of Neptune's run During 2021 I will approach your solar system sun At a distance of 19.5 or 20.8 AU On my run Let's take a look at the images here To see my orbit around the sun my perihelion and aphelion are explained to you just for fun. Perihelion means my closest approach to your sun as you see here. And aphelion is my furthest orbit from your sun that had just appeared. My closest approach to Earth will be made in 2031. Which is just outside of Saturn's orbit, that's my perihelion. My orbital period is about 4.5 million years. My aphelion distance is about 54,000 AU, so I hear. I am sad to say that I won't enter your inner solar system. I may be white, but you won't see me with your naked eye, and that's no fun. I am five and a half times as long as Olympus months. The solar system's tallest mountain found on Mars. You've learned this in this song. I am classified as a comet, but what exactly is that? I'm a cosmic snowball of rock dust and different types of frozen gas. I am Bernardinelli, Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014 UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my Perihelion We're astronomical objects Brought to you here by size Some within Neptune's orbit Others trans-Neptunian we fly 
We're astronomical objects brought to you here by size. We all orbit the sun that may come as some surprise. I'm Phoebe, an irregular satellite of Saturn. I be my alternative name is Saturnine. You can see, discovered in 1899 by William Pickering. My diameter is 213 kilometers while I do my thing. I'm 10199 Caraclo, an asteroid with rings the largest confirmed small body of the outer solar system I sing. I'm possibly a dwarf planet with a measured diameter of 232 kilometers, I'm sure. I'm 38628, who ya, yeah, a minor planet in your system. Or trans-Neptunian object is my technical term as I'm spun. You can find me in the Kuiper Belt in the outer solar system. My diameter is 406 kilometers, how fun. I'm 2000 18 BG 18 of this I am sure a trans Neptunian object don't leave there is more first observed in 2018 by three astronomers 500 kilometers is my known diameter my name is Vesta I'm a minor planet you now know I'm one of the largest objects in the asteroid belt I do show I'm probably the second largest asteroid after Ceres I have a mean diameter of 500 25 kilometers you see. I'm 2014 UZ 224, a trans Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet, but the IAU hasn't decided yet. Out in the Kuiper belt, I was discovered. I am sure 635 kilometers is my diameter. I'm 20,000 Varuna, a large trans Neptunian object in the Kuiper belt. I dwell in possible dwarf, but not yet. My elongated shape is due to my rapid. Rotation 668 kilometers is my diameter well spun. I am Ceres, I am a dwarf planet. I'm the largest object in the main asteroid belt to orbit. I am too dim to be seen by the naked eye for sure. I am 946 kilometers in diameter. My name is Senna, I am a minor planet on the run. I'm three times as far as Neptune from the sun. My surface is one of the reddest among the solar system objects. I'm 995 kilometers in diameter, glad we met. My name is Quora, and I'm a dwarf planet candidate. But for now, I'm a non-resonant trans-Neptunian object. I reside in the Kuiper Belt. It's so cold here, burr. And I'm 1110 kilometers in diameter. And I'm 2007 OR10. That name it stood strong with the proposed name in 2019 of Gong Gong. My furthest distance is 9.4 billion miles from the sun. My diameter is 1230 kilometers as I run. Not my Maki, a minor planet I be. I'm perhaps the second largest object in the Kuiper belt you see. I was discovered in 2005 by a team led by Michael Brown and currently 1430 kilometers in diameter and I'm round. Almea is my name. I'm a dwarf planet by fame. Beyond Neptune's orbit you can find me with some aim. I'm the third largest known trans-Neptunian object. I'm 1632 kilometers in diameter last I checked. My name is Ceres. I am a dwarf planet as well and the second largest dwarf planet in the solar system. How swell! Located beyond the Kuiper belt in a region called the Scattered Disk. My diameter in kilometers is 2326. I'm Pluto. I'm a big deal as the largest dwarf planet. I used to be the ninth planet in the solar system till I quit. I am part of the cold and lonely Kuiper belt. My diameter is 2376 kilometers so I tell. We're astronomical objects brought to you here by size. Some within Neptune's orbit, others trans-Neptunian we fly. We're astronomical objects brought to you here by size. We all orbit the sun that may come as some surprise. Discovered
Shepherd by Scott Shepherd at the CTIO on August 13th, 2021 in the country of Chile, you know. Scott Shepherd discovered me using the Dark Energy Survey, or DES for short. In space, I'm on display. I was discovered at a parent magnitude 19 from the Earth. Let me explain just what that means. A parent magnitude is a measure of the brightest of a star or other astronomical object observed from Earth so far. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. My perihelion is closer than Mercury at the closest orbit to the sun. My aphelion is farther than Venus when my orbit is farthest from the sun. I have the smallest semi-minor axis of fun and shortest orbital period among all asteroids as of 2021. I take 113 days to orbit the sun. That makes me the fastest orbiting asteroid and I'm not done. I'm expected to be larger than one kilometer in diameter. Next to Mercury's diameter of 4,800 kilometers. I'm smaller. Professionally designated 2021 PH 27 while orbiting the sun by the minor planet center on my run. None of this info would be possible without astronomers. Maybe you could study astronomy inside of this world, I'm sure. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. I am 2021 PH 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object. I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Goldilocks Zone is a habitable zone in an area around a star you know. The zone is not too hot and it's not too cold for liquid water to exist so life can grow. There is only one planet we know so far that is teeming with life, of course. That planet that we're sure can sustain real life has a well-known name. It is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away. There would be no more life you see. The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place where Earth sits from the sun. Allowing water to stay liquid, liquid water is the source of life. That's how life on Earth begun. Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are.
I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy All of the planets in our solar system They orbit while they follow me 230 million years is the time I take to fly around the Milky Way galaxy I don't have a solid surface so made up of gases held together by my own gravity I'm made of 92.1% hydrogen H2 and 7.8% helium HE I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy My core is 25% of my total mass And 27 million degrees my energy is the reason there is life on earth There'll be no charge cause I'm totally free My mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system Nothing in our system's hot as me I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system Michelle Mayer and Didier Quillos, they are headstrong. My discovery had won these men a Nobel Prize in Physics. There was nothing to be said about them by their critics. My Jupiter mass is a round point. Four, six. That's my unit of mass equal to the total mass of Jupiter, the planet. I'm located 50 light years from the constellation Pegasus. You need a very large telescope to 
see me, this you can trust. In 2015, the IAU announced my chosen name without a laugh. They named me Demidium, which is an adverb meaning by half. Demidium is my name because my mass is almost half of Jupiter's. Since my discovery, lots of exoplanets have been discovered. I am much closer to my star than Mercury is to your sun. That is why I'm so hot. Yeah. Well, I am spun. My orbital speed is in miles per hour, 304,000. Now that's a lot of great power. I am thought to be tidally locked to my host star. Much like the moon is to your Earth, but not as far. I'm an extrasolar planet named 51. Pegasi B discovered in 1995 at Oak Province Observatory. I'm an extrasolar planet named 51 Pegasi B. I am formally named Dimidium. Yeah, that is me. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big. Of course, now here we come. I'm Segway 2, I'm a dwarf spheroidal galaxy situated in the constellation of Aries. My radius is 110.89 light years, they say. Discovered in 2009 by Sloan Digital Sky Survey. My name's Messier32, a dwarf early type galaxy. Am I 2.65 million light years from Earth? I fly. I was discovered in the year of 1749. I am 6,500 light years across, and that's just fine. I'm small, Magellanic Cloud, or Nubicula Minor, a dwarf irregular. Galaxy, there's nothing finer. I'm near the Milky Way, but not a stone's toss. My diameter's about 7,000 light years across. I'm Triangulum, a spiral galaxy. You see, sometimes I'm referred to as a pinwheel galaxy. I was discovered officially in 1764. I'm 50,000 light years across. This info is now yours. I'm the Whirlpool Galaxy, also called Messier 51. I'm a spiral galaxy, my arms reach out while I'm spun. I was first discovered in the year of 1773. 76,000 light years is the distance across me. I'm the Milky Way galaxy, a gigantic spiral disk with a bright central bulge that you can't miss. I'm 100,000 light years, your sun is 8 kpc from my center. On what is known as Orion's arm, it's a real bender. I'm Hope's object. A non-typical galaxy of the type known as a ring galaxy, as you can see. 121,000 light years across, bigger than the Milky Way, discovered by author Hogan, 1958. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big. Of course, now here we come. I'm the Cartwheel Galaxy, a lenticular and ring galaxy, discovered by Fritz Wicke in 1941. I'm 150,000 light years across, my beauty is number one. I am M101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, discovered by Pierre Michon in 1781, if you please. I'm 170,000 light years across, nearly twice the size of the Milky Way, now that's quite a toss. I'm the Andromeda Galaxy, a spiral galaxy, I say, in the nearest major galaxy to your Milky Way. 
My name stems from the constellation of Andromeda I'm 220,000 light years across all BC and yeah I'm NGC 6872 also known as Condor Galaxy I'm a large part spiral galaxy I'm sure you'd agree Discovered in 1835 by John Herschel the boss I'm very large at 700,000 light years across I'm the giant temple galaxy a disrupted part spiral you see I was discovered in the year of 2018 I'm 10 times the size of the Milky Way that's extremely large my friend I'm 1 million light years long from end to end I'm IC 1101 a supergiant elliptical galaxy I'm one of the largest known galaxies found in your universe you see discovered in the year of 1790 by John Herschel 6 million light years across what stars I am full there's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big of course now here we come there are eight planets in the solar system and we revolve around the sun join us to learn about the different planets now sing along and have some fun my name is mercury i'm the second hottest planet but the closest one to the sun a year on my surface is 88 days i'm the smallest but lots of fun my name is venus i'm the hottest planet but the second planet from the sun solar system and I'm too hot for anyone my name is earth I'm the planet you live on in the third planet from the Sun I'm the only planet with organic life so take care of me cuz we're all one there are eight planets in the solar system and we revolve around the Sun Join us to learn about the different planets Now sing along and have some fun My name is Mars I am red in color And the fourth planet from the sun I have the highest mountain in our solar system A volcano named Olympus Mons My name is Jupiter I am covered in clouds And I'm the fifth planet from Saturn, I am brown in color, I'm the sixth planet from the sun. My outer rings are extremely thin, they're made of dust and icy chunks. There are eight planets in the solar system, and we revolve around the sun. Join us to learn about the different planets, now sing along and have some fun. My name's Uranus, I am blue in color, I'm the seventh planet from the sun. I orbit the sun once in 84 Earth years and was discovered in 1781. My name is Neptune, also blue in color, I'm the eighth planet from Sun. I'm the last gas giant in our solar system and I'm also the coldest one. There are eight planets in the solar system and we revolve around the sun. Join us to learn about the different planets, now sing along and have some fun. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V.Y. Canis Majoris, 
My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I'm believed to be discovered in 1801, when French astronomer Jerome Lalande locked me in my recordings begun. A red class M hypergiant, what I'm classified as. Now let's focus a bit closer on what makes up this star class. Hypergiant stars show tremendous luminosities and have very high rates of mass loss by stellar winds you see. My distance from the Earth is about 4,000 light years away. One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles, I'd say. I used to be the largest star in the universe, you see. Until some hypergiants like you, Iskatai, dwarfed me. I am the wide Canis Majoris. One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky You'd have to use the telescope, you can't see me with the naked eye If you have a telescope, point to the constellation of Canis Major And look to the left to the Delta Star for Fixation. 990 million kilometers is my radius Aren't you glad you are paying attention and learning all of this? 5,822 degrees in Fahrenheit is what my temperature is thought to be I'm hot and extremely bright and If I replace the sun in your present solar system I would consume all planets past Jupiter like they were crumbs I am the Y Canis Majoris One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel Scientists think I'll explode into a supernova, but no one knows for sure. I am the Y Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am the Y Canis Majoris. One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am the Y Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse my totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this This celestial event is called a solar eclipse Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this A solar eclipse is caused by the moon, that is me I'm passing between the sun and the earth till black is what you see Here are several stages and some visual tips That you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse Stage one is called a partial eclipse is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this Stage 2 is called Bailey's Beats which are bright spots of light It's when low-lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through, that's right Stage 3 is sometimes called the diamond ring This stage is key in which marks the last few seconds before totality The last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low-lying valleys creates a single flash of light on the side of the moon the fourth and most important stage is called totality when the moon completely covers the disk of the sun this is what you see then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the bailey's beads which once had shown but before you see this celestial event there's a few safety precautions for eye injuries to prevent this is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse 
My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. On Monday, August 21st, 2017, there's a total solar eclipse. North America will see, but the totality you want to see can only be observed from Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say, seen in 14 states in the continental U.S. of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there and please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online, so protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time. This is a total solar eclipse. Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss. Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must. Here's a penumbra, a partially shaded outer region. Surrounding the umbra, a fully shaded inner part that's darkened. A partial eclipse is what you're seeing right here. When only part of the luminary of a celestial body is darkened there. This is a total which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is on inspiring, so don't miss this. I am Quar, and I'm a dwarf planet candidate in the outreaches of the Kuiper Belt where I orbit. My name is Quar, there is so much to learn about me. As we adventure on our space journey on a sea Now was discovered on June 4th in 2002 By astronomers Chad Trio and Michael Brown to name the two The Samuel Ocean telescope did discover me In California at the Palomar Observatory Named after an important figure in mythology Of mission Indians in southern coastal California Sea Before my name was approved My orbit around the sun is nearly circular, you know About 285 Earth years is one year on my surface though Astronomers think my color's moderately red And that I'm 1250 kilometers in diameter They had said I'm about 6 billion kilometers from Earth It would take 100,000 years to walk to me for what it is worth Scientists were shocked to find signs of crystalline ice And ammonia hydrate on my surface isn't that nice? I am Quar, and I'm a dwarf planet candidate in the outreaches of the Kuiper Belt where I orbit. My name is Quora, there is so much to learn about me as we adventure on our space journey on a sea. I have one known satellite, its name is way, way February 22nd, 2007's when you learned of it. Michael Lee Brown did discover my Taken in February 2006, that is true. Wayward size is about 74 kilometers. That's an estimated size of my satellite's diameter. There's more trans Neptunian objects to be found. Maybe you could be the next astronomer to break that ground. I am Quar, and I'm a dwarf planet candidate in the outreaches of the Kuiper Belt where I orbit. My name is Quora, there is so much to learn about me As we adventure on our space journey on a sea Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed So scientists would say this interstellar journey Will show you the role gravity had played Almost 5 billion years ago there was only our sun Which was a newborn 
sun, star surrounded by dust was how it begun. Over time, this dust began to slam into one another due to gravity pulling it in as it smashed into each other. The planet that we live on was made by space dust and rocks that formed Earth over millions of years into an orb, not a box. They say four and a half billion years ago, Earth was a fireball. That's right, with surface temperatures over 2,000 degrees and Fahrenheit. At this point, there was no air, just carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor, making it hot and toxic when the Earth began. Our boiling ball of liquid rock was slammed by a young planet. This planet's name was Thea. It was the size of Mars as you see it. The blast wave from this collision sent trillions of tons of debris, which over time was pulled back in to circle the Earth by gravity. This giant ring around the Earth was made of red hot dust and rock, eventually formed our moon. We see today, I know it's a shock. Let's speed up millions of years to see how water formed. About 3.9 billion years ago, Earth was hit by a meteor storm. Inside each meteor, scientists think there small crystals. Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells. Over the 20 million years that these meteors fell, pools of water started to form on the cooling crust. I do tell, the water on our earth is billions of years old now you see, and may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me. Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the earth covered in water with tiny islands peaking while the core remained much hotter This hot core pushes molten rock up and out the Earth's new crust When the lava cools it forms the land we know as it builds and thrusts Over time these land masses start to collide And eventually form our continents we know today do still transform Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed So scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played how did Earth get its atmosphere we have today? There are three basic atmospheric hypotheses still used to this day. The first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas. These molecules move so fast they escape Earth's gravity into space at last. The second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam and carbon dioxide, hydrogen, sulfate, ammonia, and methane science agreed. The third and current atmosphere is made up of this you will see plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen to you and me. All animals take in oxygen and give off CO2. Also volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels. We burn too many fossil fuels and have too many factory farms. All this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm. It's up to us to change the way we consume and create energy. If you start to make changes now our planet will change you will see please do your part to save the earth to improve your future now we're capable of change go make us all proud here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played you're so smart and important so believe in what you can do make a change and set the stage in earth's future for you Hello, I'm Orgas. I'm classified as a Glutino, which is a trans Neptunian object. Here we'll talk about the info astronomers collect. Discovered on February 17, 2004. By Michael Brown and Chad Trujillo, David Rabinowitz for sure. Discovered at the Palomar Observatory using the Samuel.
8 million light years from Earth, there is a whirlpool galaxy. Its name is Messier 51. That's what I'm part of, you see. I am the first exoplanet found outside your Milky Way galaxy. Since I'm located outside of your galaxy, an exoplanet's what you'd call me. In the constellation of Canis Venatici, you'll find the Whirlpool Galaxy. It goes by the name of Messier 51, or call it M51, it's easy. Inside N51 is a sun-like star 28 million light years from Earth. The star orbits around a neutron star or a black hole. Now let's move forth. I orbit this sun-like star. I am a Saturn-like planet. They had found. I am classified as an extra planet. Outside the Milky Way, I was crowned. Out of the thousands of exoplanets found inside the Milky Way galaxy, I am the first extra planet ever found. This is a big deal, you'd have to agree. Researchers use NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory to detect the dimming of X-rays from an X-ray binary. An X-ray binary is a system where a sun-like star is in orbit around a black hole or a neutron star. I do admit it's quite profound. I was discovered based on transits, but what exactly does that mean? It's what happens when a planet crosses in front of a star, blocking its light, it's how I'm seen. This neutron star or black hole is pulling in gas from my star, closely orbiting. This material pole becomes superheated, then it glows in x-rays. It's out of this world, that's a thing. I was discovered by the astronomers under Rosandi Stefano, you see. The name I was given by my founders is M51 ULS1B. Around 28 million light years from Earth, there is a whirlpool galaxy. Its name is Messier 51. That's what I'm part of, you see. I am the first exoplanet found outside your Milky Way galaxy. Since I'm located outside of your galaxy, an extra planet's what you'd call me. One hundred twenty thousand three hundred forty-seven Salacia. I'm a trans-Neptunian object. It's real nice to meet ya. My provisional designation is two thousand four SP sixty. Listen to my song if you want to learn more about me. I was discovered on September twenty-second, two thousand four, by American astronomers. They're worth three for sure. Their names are Henry Rowe, Michael Brown, and Christina Barcoon. While working at the Palomar Observatory. This is true. My provisional designation's 2004 SB60. I'm a trans-Neptunian object, as you can see. I'm located within the Kuiper Belt in the outer solar system, 850 kilometers in diameter. I'm spun 120,347 Salacia. I'm a trans-Neptunian object. It's real nice to meet ya. My provisional designation is 2004 SB60. Listen to my song if you want to learn more about me Located 44.8 astronomical units from the sun I've been observed 124 times with recovery images on my run My orbital distance is slightly greater than Pluto I orbit 
272 years of this I will show. I was named after the Roman goddess Latia, you have learned. My radius is 281 miles as I turn. I have a single known moon named Actaea here. Its diameter is 190 miles as it appears. Actaea is one third of the diameter of me, you see. Michael Brown thinks I'm a dwarf planet, but it's debated theory. 120,347 salatia I'm a trans-Neptunian object, it's real nice to meet ya My provisional designation is 2004 SP60 Listen to my song if you want to learn more about me 120,347 salatia I'm a trans-Neptunian object, it's real nice to meet ya My provisional designation is 2004 SP60 Listen to my song if you want to learn more about me. I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. I'm known for my rings by everyone. I'm the second largest planet in our solar system. Please come sing along until my teachings are done. Out of my 62 moons, 53 are named. I am a gas giant. All astronomers claim. 6,184 is my radius of miles for you to explore 10.44 meters, that's per second you drop That's my gravity pulling towards my surface top 10 hours and 39 minutes long Is a day on my surface, let's sing this song I am Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun I'm known for my rings by everyone I'm the second largest planet in our solar system Please come sing along October 2015 was when I was discovered by astronomers at the MKO is how I was uncovered. My discovery was made by Chad Trujillo, David Tholin, and Scott Shepard, you know. I was discovered using the Subaru telescope they also probed with the Blanco 4M telescope looking out from the globe. 541,132. Lalia Kuanua is my official name. I have trouble saying it too. I never come within 80 astronomical units to the sun and I get as far as 2300 AU from the sun on my run. You think a year on earth is long? Well, mine is longer. I admit 35,760 is one year in my orbit. I have a very elongated orbit along with Sedna on my trek. Astronomers believe this orbit exists because of hypothetical planet X. I never come 
near the major outer planets astronomers have checked 541,132 Lalia Kuanua, that's my name, it is true My provisional designation's 2015 TG387 I'm nicknamed the Goblin, now let's begin there's probably 10,000 small dwarf-like planets in our outer solar system beyond Pluto. Now, isn't that fun? These dwarf-like planets are very small that makes them hard to uncover. With technology improving, you could be the one to discover. 541,132. Lalia Kuanua, that's my name, it is true. My provisional designation's 2015 TG3. I'm nicknamed the Goblin, now let's begin! My name is J1407B, that's me I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see I orbit a young star and we can all agree Its name is V1407 Centauri. In 2012, when I was discovered by Eric Mamajek at the University of Rochester, I earned the name of Super Saturn because of my massive system of circumplanetary rings for sure. 90 million kilometers is the radius of my rings. That's about 200 times the size of Saturn's rings, which makes me the king. When I orbit my sun, it takes about a decade, which is estimated at about 3,725 days. I'm within the constellation of Centaurus It's about 434 light years from the Earth But I don't fuss No one knows if I'm a gas giant Or a brown dwarf with rings I'm sure you'll find out more about me While I do my thing There's a gap in my rings Which probably means one thing It may have been made by an exomoon of mine About this I do sing I also have a Another name when I show you, you will see it is 1S Wasp J147B. My name is J1407B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 Centauri. My name is J1407. B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 Centauri. I'm 28,978 Ixion, provisional designation 2001KX76. I'm a large trans-Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet in the mix. I'm 28,978 Ixion, I'm located in the Kuiper Belt, a region of icy objects beyond Neptune. I don't think they will melt the outer solar system is where you'll find me in the kuiper belt beyond neptune i can be seen i was discovered in may in the year of 2001 by the cto that's how this begun i was discovered by the deep ecliptic survey a project to find kuiper belt objects it's still going on today james elliott found me he was an american astronomer i'm classified as a platino that is for sure i'm 28978 ixion provisional designation 2001 kx76 I'm a large trans-Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet in the mix. I'm 28,978-Ixion. I'm located in the Kuiper Belt, a region of icy objects beyond.
be on Neptune I don't think they will melt I was named after Ixion from Greek mythology Ixion was the king of the left It's the most ancient tribe you see Though my name is 28,978 Ixion My provisional designations 2001 KX76 have fun 440 miles That's my diameter in size I'm fourth largest Plutino in the night sky My color is thought to be red And I may be covered in ice Hidden underneath my thick layer of organic compounds How nice I'm 28,978 Ixion Provisional designation 2001 KX76 I'm a large trans-Neptunian object And possibly a dwarf planet in the mix I'm 28,978 Ixion I'm located in the Kuiper Belt A region of icy objects beyond Neptune I don't think they will melt There are 27 moons of planet Uranus We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush I am Miranda, also designated Uranus 5 And the smallest of the innermost five round satellites I was discovered by Gerard Kuiper in 19. At the McDonald Observatory, it must have been fate I'm Ariel, I rotate on Uranus's equatorial plate Discovered in 1851 by William Lasso, as I explain I'm the fourth largest of Uranus's 27 moons Maybe someday you'll become an astronomer, so I will see you soon I'm Umbriel, discovered at the same time as Ariel By the famous astronomer William Lassell My surface is the darkest among Uranian moons I have a lot of impact craters I hope to see more soon I am the Oberon moon, also called Uranus 4 I'm the outermost major moon of Uranus, that's for sure I'm the second largest and second most massive of Uranian moons With a size like mine, to see me is opportune my name's Titania, designated Uranus 3 The largest of Uranian moons and eighth in the solar system C 1578 kilometers in diameter IP In 1787, William Herschel discovered me There are 27 moons of planet Uranus We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush There are 27 moons of planet Uranus We're the five largest moons, smallest, two largest we trust We're the five largest moons of planet Uranus The seventh planet in the solar system, let's not rush
orbit of my host star named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. My mass is about 8.08 that of the Earth. I take 0.7 days to complete one orbit of my star for what that's worth. I belong to the constellation called Cancer. Here is an example of what it looks like. Of this I am sure. In 2016 in the month of February, NASA's Hubble telescope detected two gases on me. Those gases were hydrogen and helium with hints of hydrogen cyanide while it was on its run. I am tidally locked just like your moon. That means I have a dark side. You won't see it too soon. Silicates in my atmosphere would condense into clouds on my tidally locked dark side. I commence reflecting the lava from below so there would be a sparkle in my dark skies that don't show my day side temperatures average about 4200 degrees that is in fahrenheit if you please there are more planets orbiting my host star we will visit those soon keep it on your radar my name is 55 cancrete also known as jansen i'm a super earth you see Exoplanet in the orbit of my host star named Copernicus. Here's what they know about me this far. My name is Kepler 452b, also known as Earth 2.0. Yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun like star like yours at home. Let's see. Where am I? I'm 1,402 light years away from the solar system your Earth does play. I was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope on July 23rd, 2015 by NASA with hope. Though a study in 2018 by Fergal Mullally, I have not been proven to exist statistically. But if I do exist, I would be potentially the first rocky super Earth planet you will see if life did exist on me it would be because of my orbit around my sun like star that would be the cause i orbit in a place called the goldilocks zone that's a habitable zone of sun like stars i do roam my name is kepler 452b also known as earth 2.0 yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun like star like yours at home. I have a probable mass five times that of the Earth. Though that's a rough estimate from astronomers, of course. I probably have many active volcanoes due to my higher mass and density compared to the Earth you call home. I have an orbit of 385 days, which is 20 more days than your Earth's year, I can say. The star that I orbit is called Kepler 452. It's the Earth like star that I orbit, this is true. Maybe someday you can visit me and make history but for now i'm known as a rocky super earth that's what i be my name is kepler 452b also known as earth 2.0 yeah that's me i may support life within the goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun like star like yours at home my name is kepler 452b also known as earth 2.0 yeah, that's me. I may support life within the Goldilocks zone while orbiting a sun-like star like yours at home.